What is up guys, it's Vernes back here again with another Super Coach video. I know, super late in the week, we literally have games tonight, and I'm also sitting here in a nudie and you're all just like, Vern, what the hell? Look, I, I gotta be honest, it's my day off today, I'm working on the set day to make up for it, so, um, I just don't have anything on, don't really plan on leaving the house, and I was like, look, it's cold, it's raining in Melbourne, it's shit weather. I could put clothes on, but I'm really just going to put an Udi on, let's be honest, and probably not leave the house today. <laughs> um, so yes, I know, a little bit uh, less effort put in today, sorry about that. Um, but yeah, I did want to get this out. Uh, you know, I've, I've already mentioned that whenever I do the Supercoach Hub, I end up doing this a little bit more delayed. Uh, saying that, the Supercoach Hub video this week, like, no, don't get me wrong, I think we do good every week, but it was great having Steve on there, and I think we just had some really good talk, really good um, discussion, and yeah, I thought it was a really good episode, so yeah, that was awesome with uh, Boz and, you know, Steve, so thanks for jumping on there, Steve. Huge shout out to, no, we're not doing that, <laughs> um, to Corey, the ladies' man, Blackledge. <laughs> I tried to call him out of the Supercoach Hub, and when I listened back, I said the lady man, <laughs> so more of an insult than meant to be a compliment, so sorry about that, Corey. Um, but yes, the lady, the ladies' man himself did actually keep, um, uh, Trez this week and filled him so absolutely huge from him now we'll jump into how my team went as you can see 446 pretty stock standard below par for like the top percent but um above the bottom of the barrel guys so not a great week not an awful week really just middle of the pack stuff so yeah yeah um went up 256 space, uh, places to 2856 um, but yeah, we'll jump into my plans this week, or oh, I think trades may already be there. One sec. You know what, I could chop and change the video, but I'm going to be lazy and just do this on the side, and then bring it back. Yeah, now I haven't updated this, let's update that. Confirm. Okay, we back. Awesome. <laughs> uh, so this is how the team looked for the week. Honestly, I thought it was a good on-field team, I thought it was a good going to be a good score. I mean, I felt like a lot of people were fielding Menenga. And we had Oliver over that, so I thought it was going to be a really good week in that sense. Uh, really unfortunate, Oliver and Hurt both had one game where they were one rebound away from a double-double, so <sighs> really stung, really stung. And I'm actually really scared of Oliver. Obviously, he's just not getting along with Gorges. And we saw it in that second game. He just didn't get the minutes. We finally thought this boy is back, 38 points in that first game, 16 in the second, and he didn't have the minutes to go with it either. And I really loved what he did in that first game as well. He was active. He was actually under the ring. He wasn't just staying at the three-point line. He wanted to be involved. I was like, yes, he's back. Holding him is about to pay dividends. And then game two rolled around, and he was gone. And I think that's because, honestly, in game one, he got benched for like the last six minutes. He was clearly frustrated about that. He wanted to be out there. Probably wanted these double-double, but also felt like he could win them the game. Um, and he just didn't get out there. And then clearly that frustration... I think it's clearly spewed over at some point, and then Gorgeous has punished him in the next game and really restricted his minutes, which hurt even more in the second game. So at least that's what I'm taking from an outsider's point of view. That's the read I'm getting on this situation. Um, probably going to be a bit more of a Twitter on what is happening this week with a lot of things. I know Bradshaw's out, but I've had just a lot of NBA stuff popping up on my Twitter, and to be fair, it's all really fun to watch, but... Yeah, maybe need to see more NBL stuff in regards to injuries and stuff. But then again, they don't, they don't really share too much of that. Uh, before I keep going, I will just appreciate all those that have tuned into this video, those that have liked and subscribed for their consistent injection of Supercoach content directly into their YouTube feed. Um, but yeah, we had Cooks going massive, and I'm a little bit disappointed in myself here. We all know I had Adams, and I wanted Adams. He ended up like, missing both games, but I wanted him as captain. I said it last week, I don't think PJC's got the ceiling this week. He's against Qual, who'll keep him down. Funny enough, Qual didn't keep him down. Sam kept him down, which was kind of the opposite of what I thought. Uh, we know I said he was going to get maybe a 60 to 75, which is good, but it's just not the ceiling I want, where I felt like Adams had that ceiling. And the second Adams went out, there was so much carnage, so much injury stuff that was happening. I was like, you know, let's just play it safe and put it on PJC, because I'm bringing in stuff like Sobi that's risky. Um, I'm holding Oliver, which is risky. But hindsight with Adams out, someone has to score those points. And there was a reason I didn't think PJC was going to have a massive week. I think if at the end of the day I went for... I think I really should have gone for Cooks, and it was definitely something that crossed my mind, but... And I was doing so many other risky things that I just thought, nah, there's no way I can get away with doing that too. But 
would have been the better play. Um, the extra points wouldn't have done too much in regards to my score. Like a 471 is like cool, but I saw like a lot of people over 500. I wasn't even close to that. And once again, a lot of this spills back to not only Hickey. Trading, trading Hickey two weeks, like three weeks ago, hurt so much. I know I made the comment last week in my video where he's like, oh, he's up 60K. I'm not going to be bringing him in. I ain't that guy. I ain't going back to him. And then he goes up like another 50K, drops a 78, and she's like, hmm. Maybe I should have gone back to him. <laughs> oh, well, it's the anti I'm running right now. I'm pretty sure Kel's still got iffy back issues, and I'm not sure if he's going to suit up for tomorrow night's game. So he is someone that, if you hold, he's probably just going to get good scores. He's probably going to end up over 300k, and it's just like, damn, I traded this man at 150, and now he's going to gain another 150k, and I'm just going to... Just behind the competition in cash now. I mean, what, what did Robertson do in that time? Like, not enough. What did Henshaw do in that time? Not enough. Like... It's very disappointing. Uh, we bought in Glover, which hindsight wasn't really the move. I don't know. Clearly Lewis is getting the court time. He's clearly the better fit. But Glover just had that break even where if he did string together two decent games, we'd be good. I mean, a 9 and an 11, they're not good enough. They're not good enough. And all that did was meant that, yes, he got a price rise this week. Cool, we got 20k out of him. But now he's break-even stagnant, and it's like he's going to start losing money. It's like, okay, so either he needs to start playing better, or if he continues to play at this level, like, what, we brought someone in for 20k, and that was it? Like, it, it just wasn't the good trade. It wasn't the good trade. And I think that's something to keep in mind with sometimes when we're looking at these break-evens. Um, so he was actually super frustrating this week in the sense that he had a really good first game. Uh, he was quite close to a double-double in that first game. And then in the second game... He didn't have a bad game, but just that play at the end. I, I mentioned on the Super Coach Hub, but, like, they're three points down. They need the play, and he drives, and he just, like, puts himself in the trouble and tries to throw the ball, like, across the court and just lands in Hickey's hands, and there's no defense there, so he just runs to an open basket with a few seconds left. And extra five points to those Hickey owners, minus two for our Selby owners. I'm like, God damn it, Selby. Like, even if you jack the shot, if it misses... Hurt was under the ring, and he's on nine rebounds. Let Hurt get that tip in. Let him get a rebound. Let him get the double-double, hopefully. And if you hit the shot, great. You got a 53. The game's still on, and maybe we're going to overtime here. Which, honestly, I thought we were going to overtime. Like, oh, man, that's just just mental in reality. Um, and Anger is not the guy we thought he was. Super frustrating. Henschel looked really good. Bryce out for a bit. He's going to be a good hold over this massive double stretch. Robertson is Adams back. I don't know. I heard that Adams isn't in good shape, so there's a chance that he could be okay as an hold. He did get like a 1 in the first game, but a 20 in the second game, so if you're lucky enough to get like two 20s out of him, you're going to get the production we need. Um, so you're not not unhappy with Robertson at all. So Kelsey, pretty disappointed with. I'd love to try and move him on, but at his price point and... There's no other centers in my team outside of Meninga, so it's like, what, hold Meninga over Zakowski, or hold Zakowski over Meninga. I guess Meninga's probably going to be better for points, but, um, I mean, Zakowski, like, for money-wise, he's an extra 40k if I was to trade him, so, yeah, not really happy with, um, with them, unfortunately, and, yeah, I mean, you look at the bench, not happy with Meninga, Zakowski, Glover. would love to move all of them, but just don't have the trades for it. The on-field, I could literally just leave it like this going into this week, and I would still have all players on doubles, and there'd be no problem with this at all. Um, I think the most important thing that we've got to look at, though, is once again this break-even game, because we've got to be chasing that cash. Um, Alex Higgins, nah, ain't the guy, because he'll only come in. I saw Bradshaw out, but he, he's not coming in to replace Bradshaw. He's only coming in when, um, like, they're smashing. Uh, McCoy... Actually got some reasonable minutes this week. Armstrong might be back, but he's 200k. Like I just, who has 200k to put on Armstrong right now for a bad schedule? Like he would be a bit of a pod play, but that's my 100k in the bank up from Glover, and then, and then I won't have any money to do anything else, which is pretty annoying in that sense. Um. I mean, Armstrong generally could be the shout. Yeah, all these guys that, like, have Trez, Hickey, bloody... Anyone that held Davis over goddamn... Holding Adams was so painful this season. Sort of like holding Libra in AFL. Like, you're holding a good player because they're meant to be coming back and it just, it just didn't work out. 
Um, I guess we'll go through our trade options. I guess there's a few things I can sort of do here in this situation. Like, we want to obviously, like, this week we got four teams that are good. We have Tazzy with a double-double, Melbourne with a double-double, Sem with a double-double, and then Perth with five double-double games in a row. So, they're the guys we want to be on. Uh, Perth are those main guys. We saw Pender go out massive with a 47. His break-even isn't crazy low, though. Like, 36 is low, but if he comes through with a 60 or something, it's like, he'll go up 20-something K. It's not too nuts. The thing is, over this five-game stretch, are you going to want Pinder? Yes. Is he going to be cheaper than what he is at this current time? No way. This will be the cheapest he'll be over this entire double run. So that's why it's so important to get him, because you're probably going to want him. He's gonna like he's never going to be this cheap again in this entire run. So you sort of just need to get on Pinder. And I hear you there. I hear you there. Um, obviously, White went massive this week too, so kind of got the White hurt wrong way around. Oliver could have come down here, and then if Oliver went to Pinder, I, I actually would have the cover where I, I don't need hurt. But hurt's really safe, so I'm not unhappy with having hurt at the end of the day like if we made him captain this week i feel very safe he's gonna get the 60 and that's why i talked about uh hurt versus oliver this was actually something i talked about last week where it's like why would i trade oliver the hurt because there's a chance he could match like if i traded oliver the hurt hurt and i made 11 points this week i'd be pretty upset with that i wouldn't have been too happy with this trade i'd be mean, like damn that sucked ass uh if i went oliver the White, I'd be pretty happy with that. But this is what I thought. Hertz floor is about that 60. Oliver's feels like ceiling is about 60. It's, pr it's definitely higher, but he's just not getting the minutes to do more. Um, so, yeah, in a situation where Oliver's playing towards the ceiling and Hertz playing towards their floor, there's not really much of a difference. Uh, the difference is 110k. So I'm kind of glad at least that play wasn't made. Obviously, Adams was out injured, so we had to go Sobe in. Um, and then we went Hurt in. I forget who we actually even brought in for Hurt. Um, so we came in for Adams. Yeah, I don't remember my trades at all. Oh, well. <laughs> uh, I could definitely go check, but I'm not going to. So let's look at my options. So option one, let's, like, get rid of Oliver. And Oliver has a good break-even. It's at 38. Like, if we look at break-evens right now, all on-field guys are holdable. There's no problem with that. It's really Meninga's break-even, which is the problem, and then the rest are all also holdable. Um... You don't see Oliver's here, but it's 38. It was 38 last week. Uh, no, it wasn't 38. It was 60 last week. So he, he, there's a good chance he's going to beat 38 and make a little bit of money, um, which would be great. But we, I just don't know if I see it happening, unfortunately, with how things have been going. Uh, if we bring Pinder in, awesome. It leaves us 48K. So let's just do this sort of trade. Super easy, super straightforward. Pinder comes in, and it's just a... Basically a side of it, plus 50k, unfortunately. Uh, now the other guy that really has to go is sort of Menengu with the break-even. Yeah, we could hold him over this period of time, but he just doesn't look like the same guy in the first two rounds. And I think he's going to hurt me the most. Uh, Henshaw, Robertson, and Glover, they're all on doubles. Um, and I think they can all at least get these 20 points plus. Don't get me wrong, I think Menengu should be getting that too. But it's just a bit frustrating. With this high break-even, am I going to really hold him after next round? Maybe, maybe he could cover Zukowski, but yeah, I don't know. He's also the most expensive guy here, so he's the easiest to move on in that sense too, because I can do a lot more with the money. And if I do move him on, then we get the 200k, and then we get the guys that I was tossing and turning over last week. Um, if you guys remember who they were, you should. Cans and Perth. For these guard slots, let's get on the break-evens. That'll be good enough. I mean, McCoy... Cool. It's really the Armstrong versus Webster again. 200k. Webster is a... Oh, expected time to be confirmed. I think that was changed. Or did I read that wrong? Last time I thought it was like a game time decision when I read this. So I don't think Webster will be back, actually. If Armstrong is back, I could go for him. And that might seem really bad to a lot of people. You all might sit there and be like, Vern, why? Why would you do this when you've got so many cheapies with great break-evens available? Why would you go to Armstrong? Well, one thing we know. Armstrong is 100k underpriced at least. That's cool. He's also good enough to be getting this 20 minimum where like a lot of these guys can get 20 on a double. So he's going to do as good as they do in probably a worst case scenario, where he definitely, I think, has a higher ceiling. He can probably get towards this 40 mark. So I think he's someone who's 100k underpriced. He's got a low break even. It, it's going to be a similar thing. That, yeah, four weeks time when we can get Armstrong and they finally have that good run, he'll be 300k. 
and then you've got to pay 300k for him. And that's something I've got to toss up. A lot of these rookies we have right now, let's be honest, are they really making money? Like, let's be honest, are they really making money? Like, these guys, even with a low break even, you have a double game week with a low break even. If you f don't do enough, like we saw with Glover this week, he had a minus six or eight, or he had quite a low break even. And he came out with a 20, and it was like, yeah, cool, he earned 20 to 30k, whatever it roughly was. I mean, I can click on it and actually check what it was. Let's, let's just look at this. So, Glover comes in. He's got a break even. It's not showing me, unfortunately. I'm going to say it was minus three because he got a 20. Minus three break even. We think, yep, he's going to make money. Good hold over the next three weeks. But then on his double double, he gets 20 points. Basically, factors those games out before the double double. So, like the double game week. So then, like, his double game week is the only thing that matters. And his double game week, he got 20, which is two tens, which is basically his price tag. So, yes, he earned an instant cash injection of 23k, but now he's got a stagnant break even. And unless he can have another blow up game or glow up game, whatever you want to call it, he's going to stagnate around this price. And it's like, cool, I made 23k. So, we've seen it with so many rookies this year. Like, Henshaw's probably at the price where he's going to stagnate. Robertson's at the price where he's going to stagnate. Uh, Glover, probably stagnate. Like, there's. Yeah, McCoy, if he can get on the court. Maybe, maybe he can, but with Armstrong back, all of a sudden it cuts into his minutes, plays 10 minutes, maybe he scores 5 points a game. It's, he might earn 21k this week, but then he's not going to earn the money the following weeks. And so, I don't know, when I look at these rookies, I just think, that this isn't like AFL, where they can sort of just get on the field, and it's like, they just have to sort of get 50, and they, most players can roughly get around that. Um... Saying that a lot of them still struggle and actually lose money even at the base price. I think this is, because of these double game weeks, you, you get a lot more of an instant cash injection. You quickly get those blow-up games rotated out. And I actually think someone like Armstrong is just more liable, more reliable cash gen. That that might sound weird to say for paying up 200k for him, but I think he's more reliable cash gen than any of these guys that we're actually looking at with these low break-evens. So, because of that, I think Armstrong's Probably one of the better pickups this week. Um, I, I think Armstrong will be good no matter what. As soon as he's back, he will be good. And so I do think if I get him this week, over the next four weeks, he'll earn 100k, maybe, maybe 80k or so. That'll be more than any of these rookies I picked up over that period of time. His scoring will be just as good on singles as these rookies. Yes, it means that I don't have as much money in the bank next week to make plays, but what am I doing next week? I mean, I can trade Cooks out, I can trade PJC out, um... Even trading Cooks to, like, a Doolittle's basically banking, like, 80k. And then I can still do other things in this team. If I end up moving Robertson to a Webster or something like that, or maybe a Glover, actually, because I need a guard out. But you, you get what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't think I have to force the issue by bringing in bad rookies that won't make cash over this period of time. I think I can actually go Armstrong early. Let him accrue money. I guess the only risk with Armstrong is the reoccurring injury. If it does reoccur, then that sucks. It's 200k sitting on my bench, but I think I'll live with that. So that's what I'm thinking for option one. Um, the only other real option I'm looking at here, so let's just go Pinder um, back to Oliver real quick. It's more or less about trying to keep the guys I have and spread the money out a bit more. So it's going Menenga out. Um, it might have been going Robertson out as well. I think I needed that Robertson money. Maybe. But if we go Menenga for... Oh, where is he? Pinder. Okay, I need to make 50k somewhere. I'll be honest, it's actually pretty easy to make 50k because we want to bring in Jackson McCoy. Um, straight up. We're just going to bring him in. Low price tag. Easy. Bring him in. 127k. Who's got 127k on top of them? Ah, uh, yeah, basically it has to be Robertson. So we go Robertson out. That's fine. Boom. That That's the next option. We put Pinder on field. We have Oliver on the bench. Uh, it's not bad. Um, even if Jackson McCoy comes on and scores a 5, as I said, he's going to earn like 20k. So he'll end up at that 90k. And yeah, it's more of an instant cash injection. But then he's probably going to fluctuate. It. Like, he's not going to do much over the next few weeks. If he continues to do things, great. That would be awesome. But then the following week, as I said, Cooks or PJC can go out. 
One of them goes out, a lot of money there. I can put that on top of McCoy's head if I wanna go somewhere else. Um, I can't go all the way to a Webster with this though. This would be the other option where I think I'm just sort of spreading the money a bit more over my premiums. So yeah, and then going more basement price on the rookies. But as we sort of talked about with these rookies already, going basement price with them, it, it's not like AFL. You're not bringing in someone that, one, they're sitting on the bench not doing anything, so it doesn't matter. Or two, they're, they're basically guaranteed to make money, even if it's a slow burn. It's like these guys may not do that. They may not make money. Their points actually matter. We need guys that are playing. So I think I will cancel this. I think the option I'm going for, guys... I reckon all of you going to hate me for this, but I actually think I'm going to bring in Armstrong. It's, it just feels better in my head. Just feels better in my head. So let's just go to averages because you'll be high up there. Yep. Uh, and then we'll go to this week's points because that will have Pinder up there. Yep. Awesome. This is the one I like the most. The other option was the one I've kind of had all week, but I think that I like this one the most. Um, and I think that's a good team. I think this is fine with Armstrong in there. Uh, as I mentioned, next week... Cooks is a low break even. He probably goes up to 440k. Do we hold Cooks or P PJC over that period of time? How many singles does he have in a row after this? Uh, I think quite a few, though. Um, one, two. Oh, only two. Then a double. Then one, two, three. No, then two again. Then a double. Mm, that's a bit iffy. That's a bit iffy. Uh, PJC is in a similar boat, though. He'll have one, two singles, and then he'll be back to the doubles again. Um... PJC has also got a bit of a higher break even, but that could all change this week depending on how they perform. So, you know, trade one of them out, bank the extra cash. I'd love to see Webster back. I'd love to get Webster in for like a Glover. That would make me feel pretty good about that. Um, and then I guess I'll worry about that then. But um, yeah, that's going to be the team. We'll go over the captains real quick. Um, I think it's very obvious for most people. It's just, it's Cooks, it's PJC, it's White. Um, what are people actually doing? Sorry guys, I need my hay fever tablets. My nose has started to run. Um, most people are on PJC, Cooks, and then White's a bit more of a left-of-field pick. Pinder is a huge left-of-field pick. I think that's a huge yin-yang, and I just don't see it happening. With We've seen how low his floor is, and him and Doolittle don't fire at the same time. So there's a chance that one goes 40, one goes 20, then the next game one goes 40, one goes 20, and you end up with a 60 between both of them, which is like fine. But um, it, it could stop them. Then again, one of them could go 20 both games and the other one could go 40 both games. And yeah, cool. Saying that, I just feel a lot more comfortable with PJC and Cooks. I'm personally going to put money on Cooks this week. I know he's just been the guy there. He's been so reliable. I know they're into Melbourne and Taz. Um, but the way he's playing, I think he's pretty fixture-proof. I don't think it matters. Um, saying fixture-proof, I do think... He's still going to be really good against the teams that are kind of weaker inside, but he'll be fixture proof against the guys that we think are a bit more defensive. So I think this will be good. I think this will be fine. Um, but yeah, this will be the team for the week, guys. Look, wish me luck. I hope Armstrong comes out well. It's going to suck hearing 8 p.m. like Armstrong's not playing because this is like literally the last game of like the round, so I can't really, can't really pivot at that point. Like, I can't even reverse the trade. I can't do anything. I can't. I guess I just go to a McCoy. If for some reason Armstrong's named out Saturday night, I'd probably just go to McCoy. He'll get the minutes, and then, yeah, he'll just get an instant cash injection, and then I can always look at getting either Armstrong next week or something if I really need. But, yeah, I know he's got he's so many injuries around these guys. Chasing the injury guys is definitely not working this season. Should have stayed away from Adams. Um, you should have stayed away from Armstrong. Yeah, it's just... Oh, well. Oh, well. <laughs> anyway, guys, till next time. I appreciate y'all. Peace. Later.